What it is guys, HM613 here and welcome to another reaction video. Today we're going to be reacting to a channel called Story Booth. Now you have no idea what Story Booth is. Basically it's a channel where they uh, record your real life personal stories and they animate them as they play your recording. Now, I think it's a great idea. I think it's really cool. So I thought to myself, why not do reactions to them? So yeah, let's go ahead and get to it. So the first video we're gonna be reacting to is, I got arrested for teen drinking. Police busted me. Now, the thing with that is, that sounds like to me, this, is gonna, this video is gonna be at, uh, about um, underage drinking can we please like seriously wait till we're like 21 before we drink I mean seriously what is up with teens drinking these days it's not cool guys and if you think it's making yourself look cool it's not it's just gonna get yourself into accidents trust me I know I I, I mean of course I never done it because I've never drank before I mean of course I'm 18 and I don't drink of course I probably will never drink anyway ever because I know what will probably happen if I start drinking. I'll probably become addicted to it and I could get myself into an accident. So, yeah, just wait till we're like 21 before you drink. So, anyways, let's get into the video. Ever since I was little, I would watch shows like Cops and watch all the different types of people get picked up by the police and taken to jail. It's a good I show. had always been so set that I would never want to end up like that, that I even exactly. set my goals and career paths on law enforcement that's like me and becoming someone to help and not be in jail Th that sounds 3rd, exactly like me i decided that i would drink because of how terrible that my day was and how i wanted to hang out with my friend before he left for college and i was alone once again we went to a movie and then went to a store and next thing you knew we were at a park we sat there for a couple minutes played soccer All for right. a little while and down went an entire bottle of vodka an entire bottle of wine why what this girl is sharing wine and vodka with her friend and what? She just said she didn't want to be like, like, you know, she said she didn't want to do any bad stuff. And that's, that sounds to me, that's like a bad choice right there. Like, that sounds to me like she just instantly just became a hypocrite. I, I could be wrong. So just, I, I just could be wrong. It started to rain. So we both ended up running into the backseat of my car and sitting there talking for a couple hours. We were so drunk, we totally forgot that it was midnight and uh -oh. we both had to be home soon. We both ended up passing out and next thing I knew when I woke up, there were so many cop cars surrounding uh -oh. us. An officer walked up to me and asked me my name and I gave him my license and I thought everything would be okay. I don't really remember much after that. I do know that I ended up in the back seat of a cop oh, car. No. We drove about 20 minutes out to a station. They filed paperwork. Oh, they, gave me they did the fingerprints calls. too. I was the first one to call my mom and she didn't answer. I used the second to call my grandparents and they answered, which ended up in them calling my mom and her yelling oh, at me. No. I sat there waiting and finally they took me to the back where they took my blood and made me pee in a cup. I have scars on my legs and my arms from self-harm, oh so my God. I was put into the special side of the, the jail. The suicide prevention? Oh my God, dress. no, guys, seriously. Oh my God. Um, the thing with suicide these days, you should not, like, guys, seriously, don't do anything to harm yourself. Promise me that. You'll never do anything to harm yourself. It's like, it, guys, the thing with that, it doesn't affect just affect you. It affects the people in your life, like the people you care about, like your friends, your family. Nobody wants to see you do that to yourself. I mean, seriously. Man, people with teen, a lot of teens think about doing that, and that's just so sad. They should not do that at all. Seriously. And it's Velcro, so you can't hurt yourself. Right. I was only in there for a day and a half, but oh. felt like I was in there for four years. Finally, I was allowed to leave. I didn't know what to do, and I didn't know how to feel. My mom came and picked me up, $271 for my bail. Oh my they had God. taken my car, and I had to go pick up my car, $180. Oh, I went to counseling right after that and went to the doctors and had to get on antidepressants because the thought of sleeping and being there again made me scared. About yeah. five months have gone by. And the thought of being in jail still haunts yeah. me. I don't ever want to be back there again. I'm afraid to drive. 
I've pushed so many people away because I'm afraid that something bad will end up happening and I'll be back in that situation. Now I know what to avoid and what will happen. Exactly, yeah. Guys, seriously, with the theme with, uh, the theme with drinking underage, it's, it's not cool. Like, I've watched the movies about it and it thinks, it, it makes me think that a lot of people are doing it in real life and, um, doesn't seem like a good idea to do but the thing with yeah just let's just like I said let's just all wait till we're like the right age to drink and if we do drink we must drink responsibly because you know we could get into like some serious accidents or even arrested or we could hurt ourselves or hurt someone else yeah so, yeah, like I said, just wait till you're the right age to drink. All right, so the next video we're going to be reacting to is I wouldn't leave my crush alone and I regret it. Now, the thing with that, that's another thing I want to talk to you guys about. If you have a crush on someone, don't, like, be obsessive over them. Just give them their space, because if you never leave them alone, they're definitely not going to like you at all. So, yeah. Let's get into this. This story happened when I was in middle school. I was still young then, so I had no idea what I was doing. Neither did anyone else. For the last day for the sixth period, I had an extra English class. And in that class, I met this guy. And a guy I thought was cute. But when I think about it now, he was just decent. His name was Giovanni. And I heard... Oh, he likes a guy? That means he's... Oh, I, I, I mean, at first I thought it was going to be a girl. But I had no idea this guy was gay. I mean, there's nothing I have against. I don't have anything against that. It just, it just shocked me because, like, I, at first, like, we all probably thought the story was going to be about a guy who had a crush on a girl. But no, it's a guy who has a crush on a guy. But there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. For all of you people out there who uh, feel that way, there's n there's nothing wrong with that at all. Trust me. It's, it's what makes you, it, it's just what makes you, like you do you, that's, if that's the way you feel, then nothing can change that. You feel the way you want to feel, trust me. I thought was cute, but when I think about it now, he was just decent. His name was Giovanni. Giovanni, that's and a cool name. And I heard name. these stories about him, about how he was in the closet. I just heard he was bisexual. During that time, I kind of developed a crush on him since we started talking in that class. Around came Valentine's Day, and I kind of wrote him like a little letter expressing how I actually felt about him and asking if we could be more than friends. Uh -oh. So I kind of put it on the desk and just kind of waited until the bell rang, until one of my friends from elementary school, Freddie, he got the letter from his desk, and he asked, who said uh -oh. this? And I just asked, oh, it's probably no one. You could just leave it there. But when he got the letter, he was trying to open it. I kind of Whoa, don't try and open your friend's like, letter you to it, someone else. Alone. And then that's when Giovanni came in. So I personally gave him the letter to him. He's like, is this for me? And I said, yeah. Oh, man. And he opened the letter, and he gave me a look, like kind of confused look. He gave me a sigh, and he said, sorry, dude. I'm not gay or anything. I'm not into guys. Oh. And this broke my heart yeah that's that's gotta hurt yeah like thinking that like yeah you like someone for like really like you like someone like that much and they don't like you the same that's that's gotta kind of hurt but you know you gotta move on in your life if if your crush doesn't like you the same, then you just gotta move on. That's the that's the only thing you can do. Cause there, there's plenty of fishies on the sea, man. Like you got you just gotta move on with your life. There's plenty of girls and boys out there that will probably like you the same way. You just gotta like uh, forget about like 
your broken heart and stuff. Just move on. Trust me. But I guess my younger self didn't really take no as an answer. So I made fake accounts and I follow him on there. Don't do that! On there. He eventually figured this out and I guess he told some staff at the school and oh, he no. got a phone call to my parents saying that I was basically harassing a student, which I was actually, without me knowing it. So my parents talked to me about this. They asked me like, who is this Giovanni boy and why oh, did you do no. this? And to me, this, this is kind of scary since I never really done anything like this before. And I couldn't explain why because it kind of scared my parents admitting that oh. I'm gay. But I eventually told them everything about what happened and why I did it and why I was so confused and why I was so angry. My mom and dad were angry at me, but not in the way I thought it was. They're like, we don't care if you're gay or not. But when it comes to dating, if people reject you and say no, then that's that. You can't yeah. really do anything about it. So I learned my lesson. I got grounded for at least two months. I'm 17, I'm in high school. And when I think about it now, I feel ashamed of myself for oh doing that. Oh my god. Yo, that is so sad. Yeah. Like, guys, like I said at the beginning of the video, like, if your crush doesn't like you the same, you just gotta accept that. You can't just, like, be obsessive over him or her. And you just gotta, like, move on with your life you can't just like be obsessive because then bad things could happen like you could be like you could like be known for like a creep or something that that's kind of creepy if you're obsessing over someone but yeah i'm sure all of you guys out there have had like obsessive crushes before and you would do anything to get this boy or this girl to like you back and it just wouldn't work out but th the best thing you can do is just move on and find someone else and yeah that's that's like the best thing you can do like there's nothing else really you can do about it just move on so yeah all right so the next video we're gonna be watching is i sent pictures to a boy i liked and should have. Now, I'm thinking that whoever the story is about, she sent pic. You know what kind of pictures I'm talking about to some random boy. Now, I probably wouldn't recommend this video to little little kids, but uh, yeah. So, um, uh, let's get into this video right now. I liked this one guy. We were super close. We started talking, like, uh -huh. late at night and stuff. And uh -huh. he would ask me how my day was and what I did. He would ask me how I'm feeling and stuff like that. He'd be super nice. Aww. One day, he asked me for nudes. Oh, okay, see, I told you, man. This, this creep is asking this girl for nudes. If you have no idea... What nudes are, for for you people who don't know what nudes are, they're nude pictures, obviously. Duh, what makes you think that? And, yeah, that's what, yeah. Basically, just, guys, what is up with people sending nudes these days? I don't get it. Like, why would someone send a new picture of someone else? Like, seriously, not, like, this is like, a, we live in a, a world where, like, we just want like I, I don't know even what don't even know what to say about it. Like, why would you send nudes to somebody? Like, it's it. I I'm not even sure if it's legal or anything like that. But I, yeah, just don't send nudes. If, if for my, I recommend not saying nudes to anybody. And I said no, but he kept begging me. And uh, he's I was obsessing like, over her. I was trying to talk myself out of it, but then I was feeling like I don't know what to do. And don't do it. had this thing, and it was Clay Pole, the loser has to send news. Oh my god. And I said, uh, how about something other than Yeah, something other said, than all right, booty pics. Oh, booty pics? No. Heck no. 
No, do not do that either, okay? No nudes of any kind. You know what I mean. For Okay, we live in a different world right now where uh, kids around the age of like 12, 13, and 14 know what this kind of stuff is, all right? I'm sure a million of you people around my age know exactly what this means. And I bet all you guys out there, all you pervs out there, are sending nudes to other girls, aren't you? Don't do that, alright? Don't. Do not do that. Essay. Period. Do not. Trust me. And I said, fine, so we played and I lost. Uh-oh. So I had to send him some Oh, pictures. why would you do that? And he liked them. He was like, ooh, oh! sexy, oh! hot, and stuff. Oh, my God. God, this guy's a creep! Why would you do that? Man, seriously, don't... I want to see this this guy, like... Oh, he's obsessive over nudes. That's what I'm thinking right now. Later then, he asked me for nudes again. I said no, but I was on the phone no. with my friend. She was like, what are you going to do? And he sent me a picture. <gasps> and she was like, wait, no, he didn't. He sent her a picture of his you-know-what? Oh my god! Oh, do not do that! Seriously, that, once again, do not send pictures like that! And I said, yeah. And I showed my friend and I was like, I don't know what to do. He's asking me for pictures still. And I was like, fine. So I sent him a picture of oh, me and my no. brother. And then he was like, take the bra off. So I uh -oh. did, and I put my hands over my boobs. And he said, send it without your hands. And I put emojis. And then he was like, take the emojis off. And I was like... Okay, I, I, I want to like pause the video right here and say, dude, this... And, and, and talk about this dude. Dude, obviously she does not want to send pictures of you know what. And you're like obsessing over this. Like she clearly does not want to do this. Like she's doing whatever it takes to... Like, not send a picture of you-know-what. And... And he's trying everything he, it takes, so she does. And so, don't... So, just let it go, man. Dude, you're probably gonna get arrested. Like, this is probably gonna be, like, sexual harassment right here. Or child pornography or anything like that. So, yeah. Just stop, man. Fine. I did. And he oh. was like, Ooh. I'll grab your butt and stuff oh! at school if you keep sending them to me. And I was no! like, you know what? I want to go to bed. Good night. Yeah. A month later, my mom found out oh, that no. he sent me that because my friends were talking about it in the car. And uh -oh. um, she heard it. So then we had to talk about it with my therapist. She was like, did you send him it back? And I was like, no, because I kept lying because I was like, I don't. Don't lie about it. But then it. my mom threatened to take it up with the school district and like tell on him and say, this is child pornography. Yeah. You better look up his picture and say like, oh, he did send it and like he should get punished for it. Exactly. And I was like, mom, you can't do that. And she was like, why did you send it back? And I was like, if I did, would you be mad? And she said, no. And. I started crying and I poured down tears oh. and I told her the truth that I did and she just hugged me and she said look it's gonna be all right but you know you can't do that again yeah and I got grounded for a long time and I never did anything like that again because yeah ignore that the guy. feeling of thinking that someone might find out and ruin your life right sucks it does. Yeah, like, seriously, guys, don't... You gotta be careful of social media these days. Like, you gotta be careful what you send to other people that they could, like... You could probably get hacked. And, like, you could... Like, this could ruin your life. You, you like, once again, you, you gotta watch out what you post. On, I I'm, I know she didn't like post that on social media. She just sent it as like a text message. But you gotta be careful what you send to other people. Like, yeah, you, you, excuse me. You just gotta be careful what you post. And um, so yeah. All right, guys, so the next video we're going to be watching is Scary Ouija Board. I wish I never played it with it.
Okay, you know, if you guys don't know what the Ouija board is, I done a video of it where I played it, and basically the Ouija board is a way you can talk to the dead or the ghosts. And yeah, I tried it, and um, <laughs> it didn't work out pretty well. So yeah, let's get into this video. On Friday the 13th, uh -oh. my friends and I decided to plan a sleepover. So we decided to have it at my friend Marissa's house. So we were at her house and we had some dinner. It was really good. We actually had some acetone. Mm. We were just sitting at the table talking and one of my other friends, we'll call her Haley, she was like, oh my gosh, we should go play the Ouija board now because they knew that I brought uh -oh. it. So I was like, okay, let's go. Let's go in the basement. It'll be like fun. So we're playing and I start getting really freaked out. I'm like, oh my gosh, we're going to get possessed. Like, oh my gosh. Because I was so scared that like, because we talked to this really mean ghost. I thought we were, but it was really spelling something else out. Tears are like streaming down my face and I'm no, just no. like, oh, oh my gosh. Like, so I kept saying like, I could see it. I could. It was like in the mirror. It was really <gasps> scary. So then I was like, we need to talk to it again to see what it wants. We talked to this ghost named Dan and his wife's name is Gina. And he kept saying 40 cuts in the bathtub. And then what? like 790, we looked it up. It means love and like comfort. So we were like, do you want us to love you? And he said he has a daughter. And eventually we got this story that he had a daughter and she was like kidnapped. What? And then she like killed herself, <gasps> I guess. She died, and um, it was really, really sad. So Aww. we felt bad, and I kept wanting us to dig him up. And he said he was under the house. He was under the floor. So, what? like, I was getting really scared. And, like, he said the, gr the ghost girl's name was Erin, and she was 12, and she was turning 13 the next day. So we were like, do you want us to sing happy birthday? And he said yes. And we said at midnight, he said no. And I said what time? And he said six. So I was like, oh gosh, we have to wake up at 6 in the morning. So then like everyone started getting creeped out. So we had to like stop because not everyone was like, comfortable with it. Oh. So we stopped playing and I put it away and I was terrified. I was like, I'm not comfortable with some of the things he said. I was just like really upset. So I called my sister and I was like, dude, this is what happened. And I told her the story and I was like, I am so scared. I was crying. Like, it was bad. I was crying really hard and I was like, I don't want to get possessed. So no. she's like, oh, it'll be okay. Just be glad that you said goodbye. I mean, you're still stupid. And I was like, okay. So I Oh, it'll be okay. Don't worry. You're going to get killed and possessed. Don't worry. Just don't mind me. I'm doing my nails. Just don't worry. I don't care if you get killed or possessed or whatnot. I'm not going to help you with anything like that. I don't want to get possessed. So she's like, oh, it'll be okay. Just be glad that you said goodbye. I mean, oh, you're still stupid. Okay. And I was like, okay. So I hung up on her because I was mad. And I just got so scared. And my anxiety got really bad that I was like, I can't sleep over. So I texted my mom. And my mom is like, okay, I'll come and oh, get you. Oh, man. She's and mom, scared she crapless. And she's like, leave that board in the garage. It is not coming in the house. So I was no. like, okay. When I woke up, I woke up at 7, oh, and no. I did sing Happy Birthday to Aaron, because I promised Dan that I'd sing at 6. So I sang Happy Birthday, and I'm good. I just don't like being home alone like I am right now. Oh. But um, that's my story of my scary Ouija board. <laughs> wow, that just gave me goosebumps, and that just made me uh, shiver my spine. Like, my spine is tingling right now of how spooky that sounds. Like, <gasps> do you guys hear that? I heard something. Let's go check it out. Okay, guys, so I heard it coming from my basement door. And I'm really scared to see what it is. Oh my gosh, here I am going open the door and... But seriously, guys, if you're playing like with some kind of spiritual things or whatever the Ouija board is like, you gotta be careful because like, um... You, you have no idea what could happen. Like, you're speaking with the dead. That is not a good idea.
But uh, that actually reminds me, I haven't done my uh, Dead or Alive in a while. Uh, leave comments down below which uh, spirit ritual you want me to do next, and I'll do it. Because I haven't done Dead or Alive in a while. Alright guys, so the last video we're going to be reacting to is Gun Scare at School. Now, one thing I gotta say before I watch this video is, you do not bring guns to school Period. You don't even joke about it at all. You just say nothing about guns. You don't talk about guns. You don't even threat about guns. Like, especially do not threat about guns at all. You don't, don't even talk about guns. Because seriously, bringing guns to school has been like a serious uh, thing in, in this time. Literally. I, I would know. Like, because like, I've seen PSAs about it. I've heard rumors about it. I've watched the news about it. Uh, this is serious stuff. So yeah, do not bring guns to school at all. So today in English class, our English teacher was going through the rules again, just because I guess like some people were forgetting them or like breaking the rules. So anyway, she was like, just to remind you guys, there's no food in class. Yeah. Some of my um, teachers did that some time. Permission. And if I catch you with your phones, then you're going to have to have it taken away and your parents are going to have to come get it. And uh -oh. when she said that part about the phones, this kid raised his hand and he's like a really creepy kid. Uh oh. Oh my god, he's Pennywise! And he was like, well, what if I shoot you? <gasps> like, hold up, hold up. What? You just threatened to shoot a teacher? What? So I just, like, looked at him, and I scooped my desk away. He doesn't even care. He's just got a blank expression like, oh, look at me. I just threatened to shoot a teacher. I don't care. I'm just going to sit here and play desk. Oh my god, what's he talking about? He's going to shoot a teacher? What are we going to do? The whole class went silent. Like, nobody said anything. We are all just staring at him. Like, we were all just in shock. Like, did he just threaten to shoot a teacher? Uh, yeah, he did. After 10 seconds of it being, like, completely silent, he reached in his backpack. Reached in his backpack. Oh, no. After he said he was going to shoot somebody with a oh, gun. Oh, my God. That's when the class went into full-on panic. The kid sitting across from us tackled into the yeah, ground and do his that. was able to grab his backpack and get away oh from my him. God. Somebody else like ran down to the office super quick and got the police officer to come and get him. Oh my it God, this is so, so scary. scary. That, yeah, this is so scary. School was in lockdown and they wouldn't tell us if he had a gun or not. Like they just wouldn't tell us. We were all just like wondering and people were crying and like texting their parents. Oh my gosh, it was the worst. Anyways, I get an email. Three hours after school gets out, they're like, well, he didn't have a gun. He was just kidding around. You don't joke about that. We're, we're going to take disciplinary measures. Like, disciplinary measures? No, that could be put in Exactly. Trouble, he should yeah, be expelled so for doing that. And I'm really grateful for that. Just so you know, it is not okay to threaten anybody with a exactly. gun. Especially at school. And especially your teacher. Exactly. Like, what the heck? Anyway, I am glad I'm still alive. Yeah. But I'm kind of scared to go to school tomorrow now. Uh, you shouldn't be scared to go to school. Alright guys, so I'm gonna end the video right there. So if you guys wanna see more of my videos, go on my channel, subscribe for more. And I'll see you guys in the next one. I'll catch you guys later. Peace!